Hello there people of the internet. Whenever I ask people what their choice of cartridge would be, if they could only own one cartridge, I was amazed at how many people told me that they would own the 223-556 cartridge uh, simply because of its availability. It's absolutely everywhere. Uh, the military uses it. You can get surplus for not a, not a whole lot of money. It's a really good cartridge for what it is. It's lightweight, it's handy. Uh, it can handle some pretty significant things, especially with proper shot placement. And if you go into specialty style ammunitions, then you can do some pretty incredible things with the 223-556 cartridge. All that being said, let's go ahead and talk about what I would pick if I could only own one single cartridge. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys will uh, jot back to some of my previous videos and some of you will uh, know that a very good solid answer for me would be 762 by 39 there's a lot of really great platforms out there chambered in 762 by 39 like AR, AK, SKS uh, I mean various bolt actions of all sorts of different sorts uh, there's even a couple of handguns that are chambered in 7.62x39. But the concept behind the 7.62x39 being one of the best all-around go-to cartridges for the average shooter is that this is capable out to about 400 yards. Most people aren't even capable out to 400 yards, so if you have somebody who is capable out to that distance, then you know the average shooter wouldn't even be able to touch out to those distances. Uh, this being capable to uh, that that 400 yard mark, there are people who can touch out beyond that. This also has uh, in in what would you call it, a decent amount of power. It's not a full power rifle cartridge by any means. It's definitely an intermediate cartridge, but it's a 123 grain projectile that's going to be traveling at approximately 2,400 or so feet per second. And that is definitely a powerhouse of a round, especially compared to something like a 55 grain projectile traveling from a, uh, a 223 cartridge. So we have nearly twice the bullet, and it is traveling a little bit slower because of course it has nearly twice the mass. <laughs> but it's a powerful enough cartridge to be able to handle most of the things that people need to handle, but the recoil on it is lightweight enough to where people don't flinch and freak out whenever they shoot something like 7.62x39, especially from a semi-automatic cartridge or semi-automatic platform, in the same way that they would freak out shooting something like a full power 30-06 or say a 12 gauge or 8 millimeter Mauser or insert your choice of full power thing here. This right here is a good way to get a decent amount of power for not a whole lot of recoil. There's a lot of platforms in it and it's capable at distances that most people would need to touch out to. All of that being said, would I decide to make this my only cartridge if I could only pick one? Realistically speaking, no. If I could only pick one and I was an average guy, then yes, I would take the 7.62x39. But I do so many things that are not average. I do so much that is not just the average shooter's mindset so although this right here is a very good very capable platform and uh, the cartridge is absolutely phenomenal and could handle basically anything that nearly anybody would need to do there's just a few things that 762 by 39 simply cannot do that i would want to do so here's some 123 grain pills i'm just going to lob them down at the car down there oh I guess I only had three rounds in that one. But 7.62x39, powerful, not overly expensive. It's widely available. You can find it nearly as much as you can find your 223. But there are some limitations with the cartridge. Most of your rounds for the 7.62x39 are going to be hanging around a 120 to 140 grain projectile somewhere in there a vast uh, a vastly large amount of them are going to be a, a 123 grain and that's simply because of the limitations of the platforms that these are fired out of they're automatics and they are based around firing a particular cartridge with a particular weight projectile and a particular uh, uh, amount of pressure 
and whatnot. There's just very specific things that go into reliably cycling a, um, a, 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 a automatic firearm or semi-automatic in this case. Although there are automatics that are chambered in that. If I was to pick one cartridge, I would want something that could handle more powerful loads. I would want something that could handle heavier weight cartridges. I would want something that would be a little bit more stout. Now, if I was an average shooter, like I said, 7.62x39 would serve me very, very well, but I'm not an average shooter. There's times where I want to do different kinds of projectiles, and there's times where I want to record these videos, or there's times where I really want to, you know, put a lot of power downrange on a particular target, and 7.62x39 simply could not do that. So what would I pick? I was looking at 30 odd six. And I was thinking to myself, there's a really, really, really good argument for 30-06 because it could handle basically anything. And you could do lightweight loads, you could do heavyweight loads, you could do a lot of different stuff. My only issue with 30-06 is there's not a whole lot of different platforms out there that are chambered in 30-06. And it's just not something that I would viably want to utilize. The odds of me coming across a 30-06 platform that is anything besides a bolt action is incredibly small. There are self-loading 30-06 rifles out there, but for the most part, the self-loading 30-06 rifles out there are previous generation technology such as the M1 Grand, and that's not something that I would want if I needed that rifle to perform in some sort of, you know, SHTF situation or some sort of survivalist situation. That's not what I would want. I would definitely want something more modern. There are modern chambered rifles in 30-06, but boy, are they uncommon. So if I had to pick, I would probably go with 308 slash 762 NATO. It's not as powerful as 30-06, I will give you that, but boy, can it be powerful. On top of being a full power rifle cartridge and being able to do not as much as the 30-06, but being able to do quite a bit along with being able to be undercharged and lightweight loaded and whatnot, uh, I think that it is a really, really, really good middle ground option, especially considering the platforms that I could get chambered in uh, uh, the 7.62 NATO slash 308 round. If I were to go with a self-loading battle rifle of a modern design, such as an AR-10 in 7.62 NATO or 308, then I would have all the benefits of having that that automatic uh, platform, well, that semi-automatic platform, I guess, since I'm a civilian, that semi-automatic platform with all the modularity and capabilities of the AR platform, or there's AK-47s chambered in 7.62 NATO, or I could get myself various bolt actions chambered in 7.62 NATO, or I could, even if I felt like getting an M1 Grand, I could get an M1 Grand in 7.62. And it is just a dramatic amount of different varieties that you could get with these platforms in 7.62-308 in comparison to the number of platforms that you could get in, say, 30-06. 30-06 was a, a very, very close second, though, because if I only had 30-06, I, I would be just fine with that one. But, but, just because of the platforms, and, uh, yeah, just, just basically because of the platforms that I could get in 308, that is why I would pick it. I could go anywhere from like 100 grain bullets, I'm sure they, they even make lighter weight bullets than that. I could go anywhere from 100 grain or lighter, all the way up to, I've seen these fire 220 grain projectiles, and there's just a vast, vast, vast variety of different types of ammunition that you could get in 308 slash 760 NATO. It's not made for a specific spec for a specific rifle. Unlike something like 7.62x39, because 7.62x39 is a military-made cartridge, it's made specifically for military purposes, and so as a result, those cartridges have a specific spec that they have to adhere by, whereas something like 308, of course there is 7.62 NATO, which is a specific spec, but something like 308 is a commercial load that has all sorts of different loadings that you could uh, decide to utilize for your rifle. Now, I would not take a bolt-action rifle like this, but we're talking cartridge, not rifle. I would have a lot of different rifles chambered in. Uh, I got hair in my mouth. I would have a lot of different rifles chambered 
in 762 by uh, 51 NATO or 308. Okay, I don't really have a target out there. I'm just gonna go ahead and shoot for the debris in the car. And that, <laughs> nothing happened on that, so I reckon that this next shot is gonna go, I don't know, the transmission's still in the car. Let's go for around that firewall area. Let's see if we get some smoke start rising. Yep, there's some smoke that starts rising from the car. That's pretty cool. So what would you guys pick if you could only have one cartridge? You could have as many rifles as you want in that one cartridge. What did you pick? I'm willing to bet a lot of you guys are going to say 22 long rifle. Am I right? That is a really, really, really good option as well. But I would want something with more power, especially because I really enjoy blowing stuff up. Okay, all of this being said, thanks for watching. I appreciate your time. Like, subscribe, share. Description below has a link to all sorts of stuff. Go check it out. Oh, goodness, here come the hiccups. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. I will see you guys on the next video. I'm going to go ahead and um, actually go charge this camera and make myself more videos. I'll see you all later. I've done this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs> the poor man's Garrett. <laughs> Shame that bolt-action shotguns aren't uh, more mainstream.